So I do a lot of freelance work using Adobe After Effects. Specifically, I create a lot of map animations. And just over the past year, I've had a growing number of clients asking if I know how to use Blender, which I do not. And I've wanted to learn it over the past few years. However, I've been continuously intimidated by what seems like a notoriously steep learning curve. So I finally decided to set aside some time over the past month to try to learn this program. And in today's video, I wanna share with you a few lessons that I've learned. And my goal for this video is if you're starting your journey learning Blender, hopefully this will help keep you motivated or point you in the right direction and just make this process a little more smooth and just fun. A good first step on your journey is to have a clear cut plan of what you want to achieve. So I wanted to figure out how to use Blender to create maps, but more specifically, I wanted to figure out how to do these cool like top view terrain maps where you have like one light source and you have these nice long soft shadows. So my initial plan was to take two hours a day for 30 days and by the end of those 30 days, see if I could A, be comfortable in Blender and B, actually animate a top view terrain map with long, beautiful soft shadows. Now that I have a plan, I could just simply go onto YouTube and search top view terrain map blender. And I have done that and I have watched a few of those tutorials. And it's one thing to follow a tutorial step by step, but it's a completely different thing to be able to jump into a program and solve problems and uh, create things from scratch. And I can see that right away when I follow these tutorials, there's so many things that I just don't understand. So it's great to start with a good beginner series of tutorials that take you through like a simple project that you can create. And there's a number of really good series on YouTube. I would highly recommend the series from Crossmind Studio. There's one from CG Fast Track. There's Grant Abbott. And then of course, Andrew Price, the Blender Guru, his donut tutorial series. There's a reason this one's so popular. And I think it's due to the fact that he's broken up this series into like 15 minute chunks. And why I really like this is because uh, these longer tutorials that are like two hours in length, you could be like an hour and 15 minutes into a two hour tutorial and then suddenly you realize you've done something wrong and you don't know where you went wrong. So you have to like kind of shuttle back and, and try to figure out where, where you uh, didn't subdivide right or if you hit the wrong hotkey. And it can be totally maddening and just totally crush your motivation for learning Blender. And that's a real strength to both Grant Abbott and Andrew Price, uh, their tutorial series for beginners, is that they break them up into these small little chunks, very easy to follow. The pacing is really, really good. They're very good instructors, so I'd highly recommend uh, any of those courses. One thing to be aware of is when you're taking those courses, Pay attention to the version of Blender in which you're working, the latest version of Blender. Um, I just will finish the entire uh, donut tutorial series and it's super frustrating because I, like literally the day that I finished the last tutorial, I saw a premiere scheduled for the new um, donut tutorial series for 3.0. So that's frustrating. When you've never worked in 3D, words like UV unwrapping and shaders and HDRIs, all this is totally foreign. So when you think, okay, I have to learn this program, but I don't know what any of this stuff is. So I'm gonna have to learn all of this stuff. Even the subtleties of like, there's a difference between materials and textures and shaders and which one, and I've never even touched a note editor. So it's just totally overwhelming when, when you open up this program and you think, how can I ever, where do I even begin? That's why you want to get a good beginner series. And another thing that I like to do is have the Blender support documentation open just as a reference. As you're watching tutorials, you'll see something that you're maybe curious about. You can just jump over into the documentation, do a keyword search, and just read a quick summary about it so that you know, okay, UV unwrapping, that's what that is. Keep that in the back of your head. You don't have to do a deep dive. You just have a good uh, foundation. You're laying the foundation. Now, if you look at Andrew Price's donut tutorial series, it's 24 videos that are on average 15 minutes in length each, which is a total of, I think, six hours. So you might think, oh, I can do, I can do, I can knock that out in one day, you know, and I'll know how to use Blender. That's not the case at all. Like going through these tutorials and learning this for the first time, the first week or two of working on this was so clunky. And as I said before, I had initially set aside two hours a day to learn this. I saw another video from Andrew where he said he recommended three days to get through the Blender Donut tutorial series. So that's three eight to 10 hour days. So if you do the math, that would have taken me like between two and three weeks working at two hours a day. So I didn't, I didn't want to spend that much time just to create a donut and a cup of coffee. 
So pretty much after the first few days, I, I had decided, okay, two hours is nowhere near enough. If I wanna be serious about this, I need to allot a lot more free time for this. It really is amazing how clunky and slow it is to begin with. If, even if you're watching a five minute tutorial, like if you try to follow along with that tutorial at the same time, it's very hard. So I found myself, um, I would just watch a tutorial all the way through first, and then I would go back and have it on again and be pausing it as I went step by step. And then even after that, I try to create something from scratch, like I would try to create my own plate. It's so clunky. So set aside the time. I noticed that when I jumped into my first modeling project, I was trying to model a fox, and I initially thought, okay, I'm just gonna create this fox from a few cubes. And before I knew it, I was like obsessed and trying to model the ears, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna make it as realistic as possible. You know, quickly got discouraged after like an hour, and then went back and thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna simplify this even more. I'm just gonna have a little cube fox, make it as simple as possible, and it's a lot easier. Don't try to take on too much. For real, a lot of those first two weeks were so painfully slow. It was like, you know, when you like try to run, when you're in a pool and you just try to run or walk really fast, that's what it feels like. Once you've gone through that beginner series of tutorials and you've tinkered around a bit and you feel comfortable with the interface, that's when you can dive into those project specific tutorials that are, um, you know, more honed in to what you want to learn about Blender. So for me, it was like learning about the GIS add-on for Blender, learning how to do, how to use the displacement modifiers, how to add textures to those, how to tinker with the lights. Another technique I found really helpful was just to repeat the same thing over and over again. So when I created that first plate, after I finished the plate, I would create another plate and create another plate or, or open up an entirely new project and create it from scratch, create it from scratch and just modify it a little bit. That really helped build up my muscle memory with hotkeys and navigating the interface and just getting comfortable with manipulating mesh, working with the different tools. So during the second half of the month when I started to really dive deep and try to create this terrain animation, um, I started to see how everything is connected and you do have to learn a lot of things at the same time to kind of achieve what you want to achieve. There's just so many possible points of failure, so many different parameters that if you don't know what you're doing, something can be off and, and you, you could just not know it for a long time. For example, when I was trying to light my landscape, it took me a while, a lot of tinkering around um, with like changing my light from a point light to a sunlight, adjusting all the settings. Then I realized that the renderer had so much of a part to play with lighting. So then I'd go test stuff out in between the EV renderer and the cycles renderer. Then I would turn the light off completely and go create a sky texture and try to light it that way. Let me just say there's still so much to learn. I did eventually get some things that I'm pretty happy with but there's still so much that I don't understand there and so much more to learn just scratching the surface. I feel like I did, you know, go over some little hump of like, learn the interface and now I can create a few things from scratch, which is very, very cool. And it's very exciting to think about the potential, but it definitely gets easier. Now jumping into the program, I know how to navigate my way around the interface. I know a bunch of hotkeys. I can quickly go in and create terrain. I'm starting to think about ways to texture or ways to create different materials. Okay, so there you have it. There's a few lessons I learned from my first 30 days using Blender. I'm super curious to hear what your experience was like if you use Blender. Was it difficult to learn for you? What was your first month like? How long did it take for you to get comfortable? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.